Hi, I'm Jared Nelson from the Investing Channel, and welcome to Markets and Minds, the show where we break down big macro themes into simplified trade ideas. Wall Street analysts produce hundreds of notes on the markets each week, whether they're looking at the economy as a whole, the prospects for a particular commodity, currency, or index, and indeed those of individual stocks or sectors. However, perhaps the most insightful pieces of research, and the ones that create the most talking points, are those that deal with strategy. That is, the way that investors should position themselves to take advantage of current or expected trends and movements in the markets. Two such notes were doing the rounds last week, and were the subject of much discussion in markets that were otherwise pretty uneventful, with many participants enjoying vacations and time away from their trading desks. The first of these notes came from Andrew Garthwaite and his colleagues at Credit Suisse in the Swiss Bank Strategy Team, who are well respected on the street, though Garthwaite himself is based in the firm's London office. The note updated a stance that Credit Suisse first put forward back in September 2020, which was that investors should reduce their exposure to technology stocks because the sector does not do well in periods of high inflation. And that, as a result, the yield available on Treasury Inflation Protected Securities, or TIPS, which are essentially inflation-protected U.S. government bonds, could be used as an indicator to show us when tech stocks had likely reached their peak. Don't forget that even though July's CPI and core inflation data showed that prices were not rising as quickly in the U.S., inflation in the country is still running at 13-year highs. It's also the case that money has been pouring into tips. For example, $3.2 billion went into inflation-linked bonds in the first week of August alone, and another $3.9 billion found their way into ETFs that track inflation-protected investments during July. These are big flows into relatively small asset class. That was a theme that was picked up by Bank of America in an equity and quantitative strategy note published last week, the front page of which posed the question, what's scarce? The answer to that question was inflation-protected yield. Bank of America's strategists believe that investors should start to add stocks and sectors that can provide a yield or income which can be sustained during bouts of high inflation into their portfolios. The bank highlighted more than 50 stocks from within the Russell 1000 Index, which it believed could do just that. Among the familiar names were the likes of 3M, Costco, Fifth Third Bancorp, Coca-Cola, Intel, and Lincoln National, to name a few. Bank of America selected stocks for their shortlist by screening the dividend yields within the Russell 1000 Index, looking for those stocks which only had moderate levels of risk compared to the index and that had produced solid 12-month rolling returns. Those stocks made up the second quintile, or quintile 2, in this chart. A quintile is simply a statistical term for 20%, or one-fifth of a larger group or universe. The bank's strategist also identified a sector within the S&P 500 that could act as a direct hedge against the threat from inflation. That sector is energy, which currently offers a dividend yield of 4.4% compared to just 1.32% for the S&P 500 as a whole. The sector is made up of constituent stocks that are among the most sensitive to changes in inflation according to the Bank of America data. The price of oil, both now and into the future, has long been a driver of inflation expectations in the U.S. Interestingly, the energy sector has been underperforming the wider market of late, falling by 4.59% over the last three months and by 6.31% over the last month, for example. Losses that were driven by what many see as a peak in oil prices and the potential for a tail-off in global demand and growth over the next 6 to 12 months. As recently as August 10th, not a single company within the 22-stock strong sector was trading above its 50-day moving average. When that has happened in the recent past, in March and September 2020, for example, the S&P 500 energy sector rallied sharply soon after. We might now see something similar happen once more if institutional money managers start to look for alternatives to tips and other inflation-protected investments, with an underperforming energy sector likely to be high up on their list. That's all we have time for this week. Make sure you do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions.